Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, The Rise of the Microbrands. And this is when the music is supposed to start. And this is when Kelsey puts me on the spot. And this is why Kelsey gets paid nothing, or very little to nothing. So my computer is glitching out right now. I don't know. As we I'm... can see. Yep. So say it one more time. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. It's Norm Farrar. Welcome to another episode of Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. No stress. Anyways, between our guest and Kelsey, we're having technical <laughs> technical difficulties. So yes, you've all wanted to see me go into the fetal position. You're about to see it. I'm just about to go there. Uh, Kelsey's probably going to... Uh, Relax. Oh okay. my gosh. You're such a child sometimes. You were Welcome, everyone. Else. Welcome to the show. <laughs> so Simon is here. Dad. Simon is here. Um, we're going to be bringing him up shortly. Um, we did have some technical issues, but you everything's good now. Issue. We're uh, we're good to go. Hashtag okay. no stress. That's right, Marsha. That's right. So okay, so Kels, we got a few things going on today, which is kind of fun. Uh, we're yeah. going to be towards the end of the episode. We're going to be talking about our contest winner um, and the two contest winners, which is three kind of contest cool. winners. Three. Oh my gosh! There we go. Yep. All right. Yeah. I, didn't even know we had another one. But uh, okay, so today's going to be a, a really special episode with uh, Simon Booth. And I can't wait to, to, to talk to him about what he's been able to do, You're just using some of the strategies that we've talked about on the podcast. But before we get into it, um, I'm because of, uh, I don't know what Kelsey's going to say today, but I'm going to just say, smash those like buttons. I'm going to tell you that today you're going to learn a lot. Uh, just about some of the strategies. If you implement these strategies, what you can do. And uh, this would probably be the perfect episode. If you know somebody who's in Amazon FBA or online selling, get them to tune in and uh, just see what is, you know, what's happening today. What are the current techniques and the results that you can get? Now, I am saying that, not knowing what Simon's going to say, I'm hoping it's going to be positive. But anyways, Kels, over to you. Anything you have to say? All right. All right, so we did hit hit uh, over 800 subscribers on YouTube, so that's awesome. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's good to see. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to it. That's the Norman for our YouTube channel. Um, so that's awesome. Thank you guys, as well as like and share this episode. Um, yeah, get it out to your friends and family. We'll be um, talking about the three winners of the uh, two contests that we were running at the end of the show. So stick around for that. And yeah, welcome everyone, Fatiha, Marsha, Tony, Olga. Uh, Nathan, this is going to be Dr. Cause, UK uh, Kim. DK Kim, everybody welcome who's joining everyone. us today. So yeah, this is a little bit different, this episode. Um, it's going to be kind of like a case study seeing we're going to be following along Simon on his journey. So it's going to be cool. I'm really excited for it. Now there's okay. an awkward pause. Is that it? Did you do your thing? Well, yeah, that's it. Are, are you okay, back to me. All right. Yeah. So guys, if you like what you hear, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, throw it over into the comment section. And now sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or take a shot, whatever you want to do, but enjoy the episode. Simon. Hey, Norm. You're nice. there. Oh my God. <laughs> so good. You had me nervous. Kelsey had me nervous. Uh, so I want to know a little bit about your background. Um, like, I understand that uh, you you were actually on Dragon's Den, which is the UK's version of uh, Shark's, uh, Shark Tank. How was that? That's right. Um, it was it was interesting. Uh, I was kind of, I applied, uh, and within about two weeks of applying, I was is in the den. So I didn't really have any time to prepare or think about it. I was just kind of, I was thrown in, in front of the dragons so it was kind of uh it's a little bit like this it was all a little bit let's just go um and it worked <laughs> out pretty well actually um 
you know, it was it is quite nerve wracking, but it kind of you have to think on your feet. Um, but it, it turned out really quite good. Um, you're in there for about an hour and a half, and they edit it down to like 15 minutes. So, but it was without doubt the best PR activity I've done in the 18 years of my business life. It was phenomenal. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's prime time BBC TV. Uh, it gets repeated twice in that week and then it, it's it's you know it's repeated over and over again and they distribute it globally so it's yeah. had tens of millions of viewers uh, and um yeah it's got hundreds of hundreds of thousands of views on youtube so it kind of it's it's worked as a a phenomenal piece of pr really did you walk away with a deal we walked it well we had a deal in the den, uh, but then afterwards, uh, kind of decided it wasn't the way to go forward. Uh, they, you know, they agreed. We all we all sat down and agreed that uh, the business didn't need them as much as I thought it did, and it certainly didn't need to, to give away as much equity as they wanted in the first place. So we all uh, we all shook hands and agreed to, to walk away, and uh, yeah, that was it. And uh, but. The next day, I had Toys R Us and all of the major big box retailers knocking on the door and uh, asking how much shelf space I wanted. So it was it was a phenomenal exercise. Wow! Talk about uh, yeah, getting mass exposure. Um, oh, I'm kind of sure. curious when you we always see like if you're watching Sharks Tank or Dragons Den is in Canada. That's what it's called here too. Um, what it's like afterwards like are they uh, i see some horrible deals that are completely one-sided and you know the equity is just crazy uh you know the person's giving up way too much you were yeah. just talking about uh you know you came to a mutual decision i was always wondering if these guys just took advantage of the entrepreneur or do they walk through and do they do, do they allow you to understand that this is a good deal, this is a bad deal? Do they do their due diligence and come back to you and say, look, I'm going to change this around? How does that work? Yeah, no, there's there's quite a lot. They get all of their financial team, the lawyers, and there's a there's a lot of due diligence that goes on afterwards. But you, you and that process in itself, the due diligence is very thorough. Uh, yes. That in itself is is quite a, a good exercise it's quite it, it pulls your business apart so and it allows you to see you know under the hood from their perspective and uh, it you know so and they advise you on a good way of organizing it and having better processes in place and uh, how to you know set the business so that it will continue to be successful um so that in itself is a is a is an excellent part of the the follow-up uh and i still i still have contact with there was two two out of the five dragons uh offered me investment and i'm still in contact with them so they, they sort of follow up and uh the bbc do follow-up programs as well so mm -hmm. it's uh it's a long it's a long term you know once you're in the den you're part of a you're part of the den family if you like you become part of the fraternity yeah exactly. <laughs> okay simon just a, a just a quick um who you are and uh, just you know you're listening to lunch with norm why well um kitty moto is my main business i've been running that this is now my 18th year um and you know been fully involved at the helm uh, for all of that time. And then Brexit came along in 2016 and it had a significant impact because I, I import a lot of stuff and I sell a lot of stuff in Europe and the exchange rates and uncertainty around it has had a, a, a massive detrimental effect. I uh, was traditionally sold into... Uh, wholesale and retail. Uh, I mentioned Toys R Us. That was one of our big customers. And retail has really struggled. Uh, it has done for a long time. But, you know, Toys R Us, uh, 
they went. So that was a big part of our business. Um, and retail in itself started to kind of struggle, uh, especially after Brexit. Uh, our export into Europe was a huge part of the business. That started to struggle. So a number of areas that struggled uh, had a combined impact that was not great. So I had to lay off uh, three quarters of my team. I had to downsize the business. It was, you know, it was a tough time between sort of 2016, 17 to 2018, 19, like a couple of years. And it, you know, it had a, a significant impact on me personally you know when you let people go in your business you've built for years has uh, has it it, it kind of you know you take it personally um so i struggled a lot and then um during uh, we went into covid and into lockdown and that was a that, you know that sort of changed things again um but i i had started to move into uh direct to consumer and e-commerce during that period, um, moving because because a lot of our wholesale and our retail business was kind of shrinking, I had to look at different ways and see what was growing. And e-commerce was one of those one of those areas. Uh, and then as lockdown uh, kind of came in for COVID lockdown in March last year, uh, I was pretty much locked down, uh, and I was used to traveling a lot. I'd go to China to see my suppliers. I'd go to, I'd do a lot of trade exhibitions. And, you know, I was traveling probably about 20 weeks of the year. Uh, and that all came to a halt. Uh, and networking is a big part of what I would do as, as a business owner. Um, and um, podcasts quickly came sort of a replacement for my kind of, my, uh, knowledge first for knowledge and for for kind of live podcasts are great as well because you can get there's a bit of interaction there mm -hmm. um, i mean you guys know how much i kind of throw in comments and questions and you know, get engaged <laughs> with with a, with a live podcast um and i you know i was i saw you on a podcast on seller sessions with uh, danny um and the you, it was, I think it was a deep dive and you went into um, your background and it really resonated. And I was, at that time, I was, you know, I was in a pretty dark place having scaled back the business and all, all of the things that like kind of take a, take a toll on you as, a, as an individual and as, a, as, a, as an, a, a, um, a business owner. And what you were saying kind of resonated. I was like, this guy knows what he's talking about. And I understand that. And you've been through some pretty tough times and bounced back. Um, and that kind of just inspired me to just, just knuckle down and crack on with it. And then lunch with Norm started. And I just, then, so I do seller sessions and then lunch with Norm would start at exactly the same time seller sessions would finish. So I'd go from one podcast to the next. And uh, I've, I, I don't think I've missed one lunch with Norm since it started. Um, oh, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, the, the, just the engagement, just the people that you have on, the guests, the, the knowledge, the expertise, it, it's been very helpful. Um, and I've learned an awful lot, especially moving from retail and wholesale into e-commerce. I mean, they're, they're different animals so diff uh, you know that running a business is running a business but going to certain channels is a very different way of of uh, dealing with uh, dealing with the business you know i would sell containers of stuff and pallets of stuff and truckloads of stuff now i'm selling one of that one I unit had on, uh, I had is on do not disturb but uh what the heck i don't know what's happening <laughs> but uh I'll throw you a curveball. Yeah, I'll carry on disturbing you if you like. But, no, uh, no, just go ahead. But yeah, so it's you know, retail. You have you know, you have your set customers that you're dealing with over and over again, repeat business. Whereas e-commerce is sort of it's almost one-offs, and you're dealing with thousands of customers instead of 
of hundreds of customers that you deal with day in, day out, and you get to meet those retail customers, whereas you don't really get to meet your e-commerce consumers um, per se. But so I was, I've learned so much from your podcast and from your from your experts and your guests, and you know I've engaged with a good few of them and I've been lucky enough to win some of the swag that they've been offering as well. So, you know, I've had, I've had some, you know, some uh, consulting and some advice and all sorts of different sort of um, good things that I've, I've been able to kind of use. Um, and what I've also managed to do is, because um, there's an awful lot of people talk about exits in, in this mm -hmm. e-commerce space, it's particularly now there's a lot more talk about it. Um, and I had much more time available because, you know, I was, I was traveling an awful lot uh, before pre-COVID. I was traveling so much. I was away. I was out of the country. I was, a, you know, and you know, I probably got an extra 20 weeks a year uh, so that with using, I've, I'm using that time to to develop new skills, but I'm also using that time to build a new business. So that was part of this, uh, you know, the, the the exit, all of this talk of exits, because I have no intention of exiting my uh, long term business. That's going on forever. That's a succession plan. I'll keep building that and growing that. That's that's my that is an absolute. That's that's me through and through. Um, I've got no intention of exiting that, but I have uh, developed a new business that is an exit strategy. Um, so taking on all of the the lessons and the learnings that I've got from uh, um, from you and your guests, it's like well, let's let's create an exit strategy. Very uh, good. That's kind of built a business i've got using all the, the suppliers that i've got and and more uh, and creating a whole new brand a whole new product range uh, and going e-commerce e purely e-commerce um but starting with the exit plan and working backwards oh, you know, nice. where do i want to get to how long is it going to be and when is that going to be um and so that kind of uh has that's something that over the last sort of six months of kind of I've created, I've created a new business. Um, uh, so it's, it's in its infancy, it's in its startup stage. You know, I've started, I've opened all the accounts. So I've got the Amazon accounts, got a new Shopify website, eBay, Etsy, going to go start a create a Walmart account. Uh, so all of these platforms uh, are now open and i've designed the product and developed the product i've had i've gone through all of the samplings where we've we've done some mass production and got inventory in uh done the trademark registration uh and gone through brand registry on amazon uh i i've gone and engaged with accountants and bookkeepers and done all of the vat registration which you have to do across all of europe which is another pain that brexit has created uh, but um again one of your you know and all of these things that i've done i've engaged with guests that have been on the podcast with lunch with norm um and each and every one of these stages you've had an expert that i've then engaged with that's then either has supported me at that point and are still supporting me now and will go on and we'll be part of that or they're in line to help help out so do you want me to give you some examples of who i've engaged with yeah sure you know and this is uh this is really great the reason why we we had you on here um because you know we were just talking and uh you know i guess it was you started the conversation with kelsey and it was about you know how you've worked with our clients and built out a case study, applied it. And it's really interesting that, you know, our listeners, 
that are uh, you know either going to be listening live, which can ask questions, by the way, or if they have any comments. But if you're listening to them afterwards, too, um, it can show you that just listening to the podcast, go back. If you're looking for an accountant, search for it. If you're looking for somebody for Google My Business, search for it. But all of these things that we're bringing, it's not just Amazon. The purpose of this was to help Amazon sellers become better online sellers. So build your business, build your Amazon, exit at an optimized valuation, and it's all there. We're trying to bring all those in. And, you know, we, we try to, if there is any somewhat conflict, we let you know, you know, because we don't want this to, if I have a friend or if I have a business partner, I want to let you know because I want to make sure that you know it's straight, you know, and there there's no, uh, I'm not benefiting from this. This is not to... Yeah, I, I'm sharing content. That's my goal. Share content to build your business and exit, you know, happily. So, Simon, I'm really glad that, you know, you brought this to our attention. Yes, let's go um, to who, you were, who, who you've been working with. I, I'd just like to say on that, that point there, it's like, you know, you bring, you bring all of this, this knowledge, but it's kind of, it is to share and it is to help the, 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 the listeners and the viewers. And it, it's not, you, you're not, pitching um because this is so, this is what i see so often in like in all you know i've said i've watched a, a million hours of youtube videos on how to do ppc and all this sort of stuff and uh and they're all at the end of it it's like get a bonus and you'll get like and all of this it's it's pit it's basically pitching a course or something and this is the so, this is the big difference here with lunch with norm it is not pitching of course it's not you know it's is it is it's allowing people to present their wares but it's just this authenticity i know that you use these or you partner with these or you trust these and it is there's so much value in in all of these guys that you you bring on so it there's the trust is already there so it's kind of a, a, rec a recommendation from a friend, really. That's kind of what it is. It's, uh... Yeah, and thanks. And the, I mean, you, you mentioned Danny as well, so Seller Sessions. I find that he delivers that type of content as well. He's not interested in pitching. He's, he's actually delivering content. So Danny True. actually got me going on the podcast. So, um, you know, I, I always reach out and thank him. But anyways, who have you dealt with? So... Um... First, first of all, I think one of the first people I ended up contacting was uh, Joe Valley. Ah. Uh, at Quiet Light. Yeah, Quiet Light Brokerage. He's a great guy. So, I mean, just what he was talking about on that podcast, it was talking about exits and how to build your business. And it was, and um, I think that was one of the, 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 the first swags that I won. This was pre um, Wheel of Kelsey. And, uh, it was. He, 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 I had a like a a conversation with him about how to set up an, a startup with an exit in mind, uh, and um, yeah, so he walked me through the sort of let's start from the end and work the like sort of reverse engineering business. So he mm -hmm. he was and. We, we still have contact and what a great guy and my did you get his book i haven't i haven't said i haven't looked at it but it come out yet i think it was it was sort of due it was coming out or something but i haven't i haven't read his book but i think and their website i think has a whole lot of um processes and procedures on how to exit but absolutely fantastic uh, yeah. Kelsey, so, make sure you put a uh, link to quiet light brokerage with uh, mark doust and uh, joe valley but yeah, that, so that was the first 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 one I had contact with, and then um, I think the next one was uh, uh, Tom Meeks from Avask, which yeah. are a um, an accountancy, but they deal with all of the VAT and VAT registrations. And again, one I won a load of uh, free VAT registrations across the EU, so. Let's that's crazy, that. by the way. When they gave that away, um, you know, that saved it saved you a ton of money. I bet. Oh yeah, it's like it's about two and a half thousand pounds or something like that was saving. Yeah. We, 
I've now engaged them as my uh, VAT filing accountants across Europe. Um, and I mean, their service is second to none, it really is. Um, but yet, so they're, 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 so there's straight away, I've got great value from two, just two of your guests. Um, then uh, I had a Ruby Mendez uh, oh, who, runs, who, who had snow. Yeah. Uh, that was another 30 minute consultancy. I've, I've won a lot of uh, a lot of swag from over the last year. Um, I think Andrew Smith says the wheel is rigged, and it might be Simon. <laughs> well, I haven't won for ages. I think Kelsey, I think it's I'm missing it now. Now the wheel, because I've just like I've, anyway. Um, Brenda, oh my God, she's just so smart, and uh, so she within it was like a thirty minute conversation, and. She gave me something to go away with. It was like talking about YouTube influencers, and she understood my business within 30 seconds of me explaining it and just went, you need to go and talk to um, like these family influencers, like that just that the, all these family YouTubers, they love, they love, they've got cameras all over their house and they like just telling everybody in the world what they do and what they have for breakfast and what they like, but they, but they've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers. And so that, and it was like, it was just like, like a penny dropping. Of course, why not? Of course. And these guys love being involved. They love promoting or having stuff and helping or just being influencers of other brands. So, straight away that was the a perfect bit of very very good advice um and then oh it just keeps going on i mean craig darling i mean he he has he gave everybody everybody 30 minutes so i was like straight on and i was onto into his calendar and google my business like straight away within 30 minutes i just i've just changed my google my business from just having a Google account to populating it with all of the information that I know it took, I don't know, 20 minutes to do. And all of a sudden Google now sees me even like it, it ranks me even higher than I was. So just by filling in some details. That, that is still is crazy. And, you know, if you haven't heard Craig, that, uh, that podcast, go back and listen to it because he tells you a free way of how to get better ranking on Google. We've changed it. Like all of the companies that we have are all changed. And I had no Google my business, zero. Uh, and, and you know, how, I was a, how, much, how much does it cost? Me? Zero. Exactly. So it, 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 you can do it yourself. Craig has um, training. Yeah. And you can like, he's not pushing the service. He has a service, a done for you service, but you can, it's one of those things that if you want to take the time, you can go and do it yourself. You can add the content, you can ask for reviews. You can, and the difference between this and, and trying to hire an SEO company. So he gives an example of a car dealership. I think it's in Seattle where the, he was, he was their so SEO company before this, and they were being charged $50,000 a month. He got them down to $1,000 a month by using Google My Business. And so uh, anyways, check check it out. And I know for a fact, if you're new, if you haven't heard uh, Craig, contact him. I think it's Craig at darlingdigital.com and um, he'll give you the 30 minutes uh, consult. Uh, if you wanna join, you know, join up, fine. If you don't want to join up, just let them know that you heard it from Lunch with Norm, and I'm sure you'll get a, a heck of a deal. I know he gave everybody that did sign up um, um, a really great deal, uh, yeah. but if you want to do it on your own, it's up to you, and it's, oh my gosh. Hey, yeah, does, that's that's the nugget. Course. That is the nugget that oh, yeah, totally. blew me yeah, away. He, he, ha he has a course, and he, has, he, ha he does a, a done-for-you um, service, 
yep. but it doesn't push you into it at all. It's not, yep. there's no, it's not a pressure cell at all. It's just, and he did, and that's it. And I, I just had the 30 minutes and it completely added value. Right, and that was it. Um, and then the next one, Amy Weiss, uh, she was on and I reached out to her and we did some uh, listing optimization. Yep. And uh, so this was like, this was an hour conversation. List, did a, went through one of my sort of, um, sort of parent listings. And so could look at uh, changing optimizing it just changing a little bit in the title in the bullets just a bit of improvement and we looked at where it was where it was and where it was ranked and uh a week later we were on the top of page one for every child and every variant it was just it transformed how this listing was being was behaving and the sales just almost doubled in a week. I mean, it was, you know, and it was doing okay. It was, it was, you know, it's a, it's a not a bad, you know, it's not a bad revenue stream, that particular product. But it just... So I'm curious with, uh, with the changes that you made, um, did you change the title? Did you change the bullets? Did you change the search terms? What did you change that made uh, it pop? So, so we, so <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we looked at the keywords and, um, we found that I was ranking top of page one for a search term that had about a search volume of three, and it had a I think it had an Amazon badge as well, and I was really pleased with that. Uh, but Amy was like, "Yeah, but all three of those people that are searching that, they and they find it. Are they actually clicking on your uh, thing? Let's find." some search terms that have got a little bit more than three let's go for like a few thousand so we did and realized that we weren't ranking for those keywords so we just just tweaked the the title to include proper keywords and then rewrote the uh the bullet points to be more uh reader friendly to be buyer friendly to right uh, Explain what the product was and the benefits and all of that, and then we then we put the keywords into that. So we just wrote some nice content, yep. like five bullet points that uh, talk about the benefits, talk about why it should be, why it works for you, and the different sizes that are available, and how to choose, and all of the service that you get, and all of the, you know, all of the benefits, and then you start weaving in the keywords into that text rather than go keyword, keyword, keyword. Yes. And just kind of try and squeeze benefits into it and try to make it relevant to your listing and your product. Write about your product and then put the keywords in. And that's what we did and uploaded those. I mean, all the keyword, all the search terms were already in the back end. They just weren't in the front end. So uh, what, yeah. kind of, what kind of, by that one thing, so Amy is great at what she does. But by changing that, so let's say that, and I, I, you didn't win anything. You you engaged her, right? Yeah, no, she was on the podcast, and I just, yeah. and the, what she was saying was like just made so much sense. Yeah. So I just went and looked at her website, and then I just engaged her, and yeah, and I, it, that was a paid service. Yeah. So I don't, and I don't know if it's a hundred bucks. I don't know if it's a thousand bucks, but the difference that you had in your website and your sales probably covered that off the first week. Well, 10 times over. Yeah. And I'm curious, what were the difference? What were your average sales per day prior to uh, just, just changing your titles or changing your listing? Yeah. So we went from about 15 units a day to probably about 35, 40 units a day. Nice. And it's now, now I'm doing about a hundred units a day. Nice. Nice. So okay. this is another thing that once that algorithm picks up and you get that momentum, if you're starting to pick up and you're getting those higher end, higher converting keywords, now you're getting that momentum. The, the algorithm will see it. They're going to see that your, your conversion rate is higher and yeah. you're going to get promoted more. And it's, it's really that simple. 
It, is, it really is. It really is. That's it. It was just tweaking the title and the bullets. It was It was that simple. I mean, we had everything. Else. I mean, we've got the product's pretty good. I mean, it's got good reviews. We've got hundreds of reviews because this is over. This product's been selling for years. Like, and it's sort of, it just hasn't, it just wasn't, uh, it, it just wasn't optimized. The listing wasn't optimized. So I got a question about, uh, kind of off topic, but okay, you've got this optimized listing. Um, you're getting some great sales. Have you ever thought about, or do you have Amazon recommended editorials? Uh, no, that was uh, some. That's the net. That's next. That's that's kind of the next step, if you like. Uh, yeah. I because I got that from uh, from you last week, um, and I thought yeah, that's yeah. So that, that's something that we haven't done. Um, yeah, that can increase your sales easily by ten to thirty percent. Yeah, so that's that's a that's a PR reach uh, job. That was yeah. Uh, Shane Shane uh, does. Uh, he, yeah, was, yeah. he was talking a bit Shane, about that. Yeah, you and Shane were talking about that last week, and it was like, okay, yeah, we'll look into that. That's that's kind of next. That's the next one of the next steps, if you like. That's on the to do list. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, PR reach is on my list. I I um, I also won a uh, press release distribution. Um, so I wrote an, I wrote a quite a, a long um press release yeah and you distributed it so that was a, that was another so that was another thing i who else have i engaged with um i mean there's just i mean Marth, marcia who uh was on who's been on one of your podcasts who was on with me uh, previously and she's she's one of the one of the regular listeners she's um, listening now yeah. yeah we well we we engaged and i mean what a font of knowledge she is she's like i mean she? uh, <laughs> just just inspirational and uh yeah just just a genuinely kind and great human being so i've engaged with her a few times and we've 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 has, had some contact and there's there's a lot of other others that are in the in the chat and in the facebook group that you know we just kind of um engage and it says that's so the, there's the community side of things which is um you know when when you're traveling and you're going to a lot of trade fairs and you you're seeing factories you're doing a lot of networking you're seeing a lot of people when when all of that's taken away you, you just don't get any networking there's amy, <laughs> there's amy. <laughs> um oh she i mean she's great but um but yeah the networking opportunities which i've had from being part of the the the, the lunch with norm community and this whole e-com community it, it it's kind of it's filled that gap if you like and which is which is invaluable because uh, running a business certainly running a, a, a small business is very very lonely place it's it's you know it's hard work you're thinking about it constantly you, you you're not 100 percent sure whether you're making the right decision right. and having a community that you can go to and trust and be part of and bounce those ideas or those questions or you know and you get feedback pretty quickly it's invaluable you just it, it it's you can't you really can't put a number on how valuable it is to be part of that to, it, it's you know it's like having friends and family that know what you're talking about you know because if you you know friends and fam most People, my friends and my family really aren't that bothered about me. They, you know, they're bored of me talking about business and like this, that, and you know, like, that. Feels. <laughs> it's legit, they're just not interested in it. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, look at him, he's going on again. So, having a place where you can happily talk to people, and I say it's lonely, it can be a lonely place. So, you've got to have this network. Um, and this is what you guys provide. Um, and, you know, and going back a year ago, like I said, I was in that really dark place. Uh, and the, the podcasts have definitely given me 
hope and inspiration and drive and motivation and got you know i'm totally i'm back in the light now so that's one thing i think there's a lot and this is this is a, a nod to danny with uh, sort of his mindset mondays would be a lot of this nothing to do with e-commerce it was all about making sure that you're looking after yourself and your right. your your well-being and you know and those sort of things that 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 stepped that really did step me out of the darkness and into the back into the light and um it it just definitely definitely is a, a much better place to be now um but that there's always there's you know and i think you might have kind of alluded to it as well when you were talking to Danny in your podcast about how there is there's, there's always light after dark. You know, the, the sun always rises in the morning. You know, the, 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 the darkness isn't always there forever. Um, and that's sometimes is it's, it's not always, when you're in it, it's not easy to appreciate that. Um, right. And, you know, something that, not everybody talks about all the time and they don't like to talk dwell on it but you know an awful lot of people do struggle and you know i'm sure everybody at some point has you know has to deal with 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 hardship whatever it is with, with you know with some traumas and life itself you know life so, business i always look and i i don't know <laughs> if I do this myself, if it's psychological, but I find that there's always something comes up usually every three months. So there's a challenge that comes up. I don't know what the heck it's going to be, but something's going to come. Is, am I going to receive an email from Amazon? Am I going to get something from my bank? Am I going to get whatever it is I got to deal with? And as long as I know, and <laughs> like we were, you, you were just saying that, you know, in my younger days, I'd go to bed completely stressed, wouldn't get uh, sleep, bleeding ulcer. Like I, I was like, it was bad. And, uh, you know, worried about this, worried about that, worried about making payroll, worried about, you know, whatever it would be. And it never ended up being as bad as it would be. Never, that's ever, it. you know, just... and that's now, you know, when something happens, I don't know what, you know, and in the next three months, I don't know what's going to be, but guess what? I'm going to brush it off my shoulders. I'm going to get to sleep. I'm going to wake up the next morning and I'm going to go to work. No, that is, they're the words that you said. I remember it now. You said it's never as bad as what you think it is. And it's so true. It's And that they were the words that pulled me out of that, mm. that place. And it, you know, and it's, you know, and I, I I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you for that. You know, oh, you're so. welcome. Um, somebody, somebody actually listened to, to something I said. <laughs> My son Kelsey never does, but uh, <laughs> but anyways, no, I'm glad. I'm glad if those words helped. I'm glad it did. Yeah. Now so, I'm really interested. So we've talked a little bit about you know you've you've talked to some people. Um, some of our guests have helped you out. Uh, let's talk about where your product was, where it is now. Have you hit your milestones? What's going on? Okay, so um, the new the new brand is um, we only launched uh, we're launched in November. It's a, it's it's sports and outdoor product, uh, and pretty much immediately hit as a nonsense. Uh, the, the brand registry was was uh, was incorrectly in the back ends. They 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 put the wrong brand name, or and I, the the amount of time we contacted seller support, and it'd just be like, yeah, just go into seller uh, seller central and change the the brand name, and it will be edited within fifteen minutes. Blah blah blah. Oh my god! Three months later. And probably a thousand of these contacts with seller support are getting nowhere. It was like, right, let's just bin all ASINs and start again. So, yeah, so this was probably February. So mm -hmm. yeah, about eight weeks ago, decided just to just to scratch everything. I mean, we made some sales, got a few reviews, 
but the velocity and the like it was just, it was it, it was more there was more value in starting over and getting it right than trying to because I need because we needed uh, brand registry to work properly to be able to upload the uh, EBC because uh, we w we weren't able to do that and it was just causing all sorts of issues so right let's start over again and recreate these uh, these uh, aces like let's just start over. So, so you got kicked between the legs. Yeah, I mean that was you got up. It was a it was a it was a three month you know sort of bent double getting kicked and, and you know and Amazon like to if you're down they like to kick you even harder you know yeah. sort of, they're pretty good at that they're, they're, you know they they're sort of their support their seller support I'm not sure I'm not quite sure that's the the appropriate name for it but uh, you know. Um, That'll be the that'll you're be calling it the dartboard seller support dartboard where you yeah, know they just uh, yeah wherever seller. the dart lands they give you an answer yeah or so seller seller not support or <laughs> in support or unsupportive or whatever uh, but uh um yeah so kind of got got launched I launched so I've got you're gonna love this I've got about three hundred and fifty asins um. There's, I've got about t I've got ten parents, and they've all got uh, they've all got variants, colours, sizes. So that's why there's so many. So okay. I've got about ten ten SKUs that have all got different. So so there's ten parents if you like, and they've all got variant uh, childs and different in different colours and sizes. Um, and I've looked. We, we properly launched. Uh, three of them about eight weeks ago because we just we start we decided to start from scratch and then sort of step phase the launches and just to see how see what was working and what wasn't working uh, trying to take into uh, in, into consideration all the li listing optimization I'd learned from Amy and you by put having some influence of programs going and getting all of those sort of things in place. So we're probably, uh, I think last week was the last launch we did, um, and it's yeah, it's going okay. It's stepping up. I mean, if I think what I would do with the next launches is probably do some more pre-launch work. I'd probably do more off Amazon. I wouldn't just load the list in, send inventory in. And do PPC and launch it that way. That's that is that works, but I think I'd probably try to do a bit more engagement, and create a bit more of a, a social media yeah. um, frenzy, if you like, and do a bit more uh, pre-launch noise to kind of generate a bit of a bit of interest and cr create those email lists, and then drive that external traffic on the launch that which would then probably help with driving momentum and bit like and turning the flywheel a little bit quicker um so you know it's, it is it's a it's an immense learning curve but uh yeah so far it, it's it's not going too bad um this is only in the uk i've only launched in the uk so the next step is to launch because uh, I'm still waiting for my VAT, VAT registration to come through from Avast. They've done all the they've done all the um, applications um, with with COVID and Brexit and all sorts of other stuff. The normal application time is about eight weeks. This is probably extended to 12, 15 weeks, and we're in week twelve now. So we should be able to launch into the rest of Europe in the next few weeks nice. and then once we've got a bit more men momentum there it's then start into the us and expand expand into the us um but i'm really going to start putting a bit of effort into the uh, shopify site as well because uh with um with kirimoto shopify does very well and i know how to use google we know how to do all of we know we know how to make uh, social media drive traffic and Google drive traffic and how to get uh, 
Shopify working well and eBay works pretty well. I, you know, I'm something I've also learned uh, from e-commerce is do not put all your eggs into the Amazon basket. Yep. You are absolutely at the mercy of that beast. If they decide to suppress your listings, turn you off, give you limits on your inventory, your inventory gets lost. A ship gets stuck in a Suez Canal and you can't get your stock in and get, can't get it into Amazon. You, you're in a spot. Of, you, you, you just you, your risk is too high. Uh, for me, I, you know, I know I've heard a lot of uh, a lot of your guests of 100% Amazon and they they abide by that and they love that uh, and it, it it minimizes their efforts. And their focus is 100% on that right. channel. Um, and that works, and it works for them. And I have no doubt that they've got backup plans for if, like, if, if things do go wrong. But do you know what? I, 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 I don't want to take that risk. So um, spread it, spreading you. that risk is. I'm with is, you. Like that, my risk tolerance, I, there have been guests that have come on and said, uh, uh, focus 100% on Amazon. And, you, you know, for, and this is just my opinion is that, and because I've been there and I've lost a company because I was a one legged stool. <laughs> so I don't want to be that one legged stool. So if I've got it on Amazon, um, eBay has been very good. I've tried to get people from eBay on not a, not a single person has ever returned an email, a call, nothing. Yet. eBay is great. eBay yeah. works really eBay's well. eBay is fantastic. And a year ago, or a year and a half ago, we had two guys that we had uh, connections in eBay, and they were awesome. They were the business development director who could help anybody. Like if anybody were to call them, it's like Craig Darling or Amy. If you call them up, they'd give you a hand, right? And they both at the same week ended up leaving eBay. And now I cannot get eBay. And eBay is a great platform. It's not the eBay of, you know, 10 years ago, which really sucked. Yeah. It is a brand centric platform now. They want yeah, to build their right. brand. It's pretty, They've got it's really cool stuff. Like even uh, one of the things that I love, if, okay, so let's say I'm going into a purse store to buy something for my wife for Mother's Day. Boom, I can take a picture, it can go up to eBay, it'll show me anybody who's selling that purse. It's really, it's quite cool. And they'll protect your brand. And they've got all these other things that are happening. Plus their, their actual customer service, if you are a business, um, uh, if you're in as a business, yeah. uh, they're, they actually try to help. They, they, they are, they're very supportive. I mean, the great thing about eBay being kind of the the sort of the second place to uh, to Amazon is they are working hard to build their platform, build the, and generate uh, traffic both from sellers and from buyers. And they they have got a, they've got a great marketing strategy. They do a lot of advertising. They're all over, and it's easy to use. It's easy to use as a as a as a buyer as a, if you want to buy stuff it's easy to use you can find the stuff you want and as a seller it's really easy to use and it's easy to to rank i mean you don't have all of the tools like you do with like with the helium 10 and jungle scout and all of the chrome extensions that you've got you don't have all of those particularly with ebay um, but you, you don't, and they don't have FBA. You don't have. You've got. To, you've got to be. You've got to have your own stock, and you've got to have your own logistics, and you've got to be able to manage that. But it, but it they sell internationally, and they take care of that for you. You know, if somebody buys, if anybody buys your product, they. I mean, it's it's not like in Amazon, but uh, they've got a distribution network, a fulfillment center. I believe it's in Kentucky. And it'll they just send off the product to anywhere in the world, no charge. Right. Yep. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Well, I am trying my best to get them on. I'm actually uh, going to be spending a uh, a lot more time talking about Walmart 
and um, trying to get some guys from Shopify to come on. So that's kind of where we're we're going. We're we're not going to get away from Amazon, um, but we are trying to bring on some more guests that are a bit more diversified in the e-com space. But uh, before we go there, Kels, do we have any uh, questions that have come in for um, Simon? I know it's at the top of the hour. Yeah, so we have a couple of questions. Uh, Look from at you, Daniel. little guy. <laughs> Simon, how are you dealing with the C transfer delays and managing your inventory? Um, exercising patience and um, just, yeah, it's, it, it's a nightmare. Uh, yeah, C transport is in an absolute mess we all know that it's you know there's there is a massive shortage of empty containers returning to china uh the the the, the, the shipping companies are capitalizing on that and they've increased their prices by tenfold um managing inventory is one of those really tough things i saw this coming last year um i you know, the, I think I might have thrown in comments whenever you've had logistics people in saying this is not going to be over by Chinese New Year. I, you know, I think one of the few of the comments I've said, I am a pessimist on this. I am generally optimistic, but on shipping, I am very pessimistic. I was like, because everyone was going, yeah, Chinese New Year, it'll all be over. This was in Q4 last year. And I was like, no, you want to be thinking Q4 next year, Chinese New Year. 2022 that's when it might start to ease up so fortunately my crystal ball at the time was quite clear and showing me up so i i really upped the ante on production and getting stock in i've got i mean i've still got a lot of stock ready in china and i'm struggling to get it over i'm having air freight stuff over at times um it's it's is a tough one uh but you've you've really kind of got to suck it up now. And I think you've now really got to start planning, forecasting for Q4 now. Get your production stuck, because lead times have extended as well, because there's a there's a, the difficulty getting materials in, into factories. Factories are absolutely stuffed full of finished product. They literally can't move in the factories because they can't ship it out. So there's no warehouse space in Ningbo and Shenzhen and and in Shanghai. So they can't really empty their factories, their warehouses. Are, so that's causing issues with on the assembly lines, which has a knock-on effect. So lead times are extending from normal 30, 40, 30 to 45 days to... 60, 80, 90, 100 days for production times. And then you've got, you know, I've just I've just had a discussion with a forwarder about uh, putting a container on a ship. He goes, it's going to be stop it. It's got two stops on the way. I think it's going to Korea and Singapore. Or do you want to wait for a direct shipment? I said, well, it could be. And, that, and that's, that's going to take 50 days from China to the UK instead of the normal 28 days. And it's like, well, it could be another two weeks, three weeks, four weeks before we find a direct ship. So mm. just get it on board. And when it gets here, it will be here. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you just have to suck it up. and But plan ahead now. Get planning for Q4. That is, you've got to be doing it. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, so this is kind of about Google My Business. Um, Tom Hartley was saying that he got rejected by Google, uh, that they needed a physical location and they don't support online businesses. So no, how do you get that's, around that? Uh, hey, Tom, uh, your physical location, you can give a home address. You, um, you don't have to give like what we did is we gave my home address. And you don't have to show it. There's, um, you could let them know not to show it. There's a box you can check not to show your address, uh, but they need to have an address uh, just to just to verify that you're real. Um, but again, they're not showing the address. It's not a bricks and mortar. We're a podcast. We're virtual. All I did was just register under my um, my Canadian address. 
And one of the things is that um, they can geotarget or geofence, they call it. Uh, so if, if I want to go and pick specific countries or not pick specific countries or not allow countries to rank, um, rank in, then I can pick them as well. So it's really cool. I'm in Canada, but my main target could be in the US, UK, uh, UK Australia, wherever I want to um, target. So uh, anyways, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Simon. I no idea. I would just say, yeah, just use your, either your home address. Or you might even be able to get like a, a, a PO box or sort of there might don't, be a... Don't use a PO box. Don't use a PO box. No, uh, they'll, they will reject um, a PO box or if you go to the UPS store, you know, and you just get uh, one of their, you know, it, it, it is a, you know, it's, it is a box. They know. So just use a real address. And again, it's not being published anywhere. And if you're, if you're an online, if you're an online business, you should, if you've got a website, you should really have your address on there anyway and a contact number. I mean, it, it gives you visibility and transparency and, you, you know, you, you, you should be, letting your customers know who you are and that you are real. And if you do add, like, let's say you, yeah, let's say some freight forwarders will allow you to use their address, but um, there are places in the States that you can get a US address. But again, I don't know why, just use your own. If you do have a location, um, the, what, if you're using your address, and you're using your address for Google My Business, if you're using your address for, like, let's say if you're doing press release, which asks for contact information, well, guess what? You're going to, Google Maps going to pick you up and start ranking you as well. So that's also a bonus. Okay. And our last question is from Darwin. It's kind of just a broad question. Um, I've never traveled to meet manufacturers. Uh, how do you guys feel not going to meet them? How will it affect us as far as looking like a real or more legitimate company, uh, not including COVID? So I guess, how do you get seen as a real or legitimate company as a seller? Sales. Yeah, place orders. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you, I think it's, to build a relationship, you've got to meet these people face to face. Um, you know, even if it's just once. And I like I like going to factories uh, yeah. because you can you can see the condition of the factories. You can see, you meet the, the the workers and the people that are making your stuff, and you also see your competitors and all of the other stuff that they're making. And and it gives you it gives you some ideas on other other products um you know i mean doing all this ace in reverse stuff and all of that kind of trying to work out how to make a product from helium 10 yeah it's all well and good but go and, and go to exhibitions meet meet them meet them in uh, exhibitions and trade shows i know it's difficult it's really difficult now but you know everyone's zooming uh yeah. and skyping so get on get on a video call with them just you know, if you're if you're legit, that's all they really want is to see that you're a legit seller. Um, I know in the like 20, 25 years ago when uh, we went over to Taiwan, it's just a different culture. They wanted to know it, 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 you never talked business. It was family first. They got to know you and then it was business. Like the first day we would go in and we meet a bunch of suppliers. It was really not about business now that's this is completely changed but the second time we would meet we would you know we would we actually we'd go out we'd break bread and i'm telling you man uh, <laughs> you know you'd have some feasts like you know the, the, your suppliers would they would wine and dine and they still do like they, they if they feel that you're legit if you're taking the effort to come over and to talk to them now not only are they going to help you with product innovation um, they want you to succeed. You know, if you're going to make money for them, they're going to want you to succeed. And it's, it's never a bad idea uh, to become um, like you can, I have very good relationships with my suppliers. 
and I can talk to them. I can say that we're friends uh, with some of the suppliers that we deal with. Um, it's just, it's great. If you're able to break bread with a supplier and you're, you're, the other guy's not, or the other lady's not. And also the other thing is if you're treating them properly on price, there is a price point level where you can like, which is a point of resistance anywhere below that you're going to have problems. The quality is going to be bad. They're not going to be happy with you. I like the win-win. I don't mind my supplier making money. If I can take that product and create perceived value and, you know, uh, and I, I don't care what I do with it afterwards. I might make two, three, four, five, six times, you know, the cost of goods. But if I can pay a few extra cents and they're happy, I'm good with that. I know when I call, they'll give me better service. And I think Darwin, I think there's a, I mean, like any relationship, it, it takes time. You can't, it's, whether it's virtual or like on email or face to face, you know, there's, there's no quick, quick way. It's, uh, it's all about building that trust. And it's a two-way street. You've got to you've got to kind of learn to trust them as much as they learn to trust you. So that's right. It is all about and the tone that eventually comes through on on the emails. Um, but yeah, I think getting on video calls works quite well. Yeah. Phone the, phone these guys up. So you know they spend most of their time doing emails. So getting a phone call is they quite like that. But it it's it's a it it just takes time. You just gotta just gotta work at it and. However, whether you decide not to go there or, you know, I'm definitely, most definitely not going to be going to China as regular. I mean, I was, I was going six, seven, eight times a year uh, and spending 10 days at a time there. You know, I mean, my kids, they, they, they were turned into teenagers while I was building the business. It's like, who, and they were like, when I turned up, when I'd arrive home, they were like, Mom, there's a strange man in the house. What's going like, But the last year, you know, with the lockdown as well and then being home from school, I've got to know my kids again. And I'm, there's no way I'm going to go traveling around the world and not seeing these guys. And you know, yeah. I quite like being at home. So, yeah, it's just, and, you know, there's the, the environmental issue, you know, jumping on a plane and flying around the world and burning all of that fossil fuel. It's, it's unnecessary, really. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, just spend time, trust them, get to know them, and let them trust you as well, but it takes time. Great answer. Okay, I think that's about it. We're going to wind up. Simon, no, thank you so got, much. I haven't got a giveaway. Uh, we, we've got the contest winners that, that Kelsey's going to get to right now. So those, that's, a, that's the giveaway. How's that? Okay. Your giveaway was your insights and your info today. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank no, thank you. Thank you to all your guests. Thanks, Kelsey, as well. I mean, Kelsey's an absolute superstar. So, um, but yeah, no, thank you, guys. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, thank you, Simon. Carry on with the great work. Absolutely brilliant. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what time is it, Kels? All right. You are already... We don't have the wheel of Kelsey today because uh, the pick the winners have already been decided. Okay, all right. Yeah, we yeah. To so out what you're gonna do there? All right, so we do have the contest winners. Yes, so we have three contest winners. <laughs> okay, take it away. <laughs> look nope. at look at look at how he froze. <laughs> uh, am I frozen? No, you were, but okay. you had your mouth open, your eyes closed. It was pretty funny. Okay, okay, so perfect. who are the winners? Right. Let's go. So number one for our AirPod Pros, um, all we have is an email. So I mm -hmm. just want to say that it, it's an email that starts with an LUD. I sent the email already. We don't have a name or anything. So check your spam box. Maybe like just make sure. I I don't believe I have uh, the name back yet, or they okay. haven't replied back yet. So if we never hear from them, we could redraw. Yeah, but we'll, that email we'll, is we'll out. We'll redraw Monday. How about that? Yeah. If we don't hear back. Okay. And for the Kelsey consultation social media, our winner was Fatiha. All right, Fatiha. There. So and she's drum rolling, so she got it. 
Perfect. So, so we can decide on a time and date um, for that. And then for our big winner, we have Stephen Yu. So, Fantastic. Yes. So Stephen Yu, I know he's he just launched a product too, so I think he'd really appreciate that. But he is the winner. Um, so that's an hour giveaway or hour consultation with you. So, yeah. There we go. Well, that's great. So, yes, just get me Stephen's uh, information. We'll book a time and um, we'll have a, an hour consult and hopefully I can help him out uh, with his product, product launch. Kelsey, I think, uh, yeah, Fatia is going to uh, love it. I know that she's got a few things happening right now. Um, so this will help enhance her brand. So, all right, everybody. Um, yeah, again, so I got to really thank, thank. Yep, go ahead. I was just going to say thank you, everyone, that did our contest. It was awesome to see everyone's beards that they put on. Um, we really <laughs> did see the Beard Nation um, come through. And it was, yeah, really great. We love building out our community and, like, connecting with everyone. Um, and, yeah, and Simon, uh, if you're watching, if we're going to end the show and then just stick around, don't leave the broadcast, and we'll uh, talk to you afterwards, too. All right. Um, fantastic. Okay. okay. So Thanks. if Kelsey doesn't interrupt me, I, I'll, I'll just end up the podcast just by thanking everybody. I'm going to do his job a little bit too. Please, if you like what you heard today, uh, smash those like buttons, uh, subscribe. And if you're in YouTube, maybe ring that bell uh, and you'll get notifications of when we're going live or if we, uh, if we're adding any new content to the youtube site and by the way we're going to be doing some really cool new things in social media um we're going to be adding a few new playlists in uh in our youtube channel we're going to be trying to stretch out and providing a few uh, bits and pieces of different content in different platforms kelsey and i were talking about that a little earlier today and so there's a few surprises that'll be coming up over the next uh, couple of weeks and you yeah. look like you're going to say something I was just going to say, we may be playing around with our Patreon again, really upping it and giving more value to it. Um, there would be extra tiers. So we're going to, nothing's going to change here. We're going to still do the Lunch with Norm podcast every three uh, days, um, giving you everything. We don't want to put you guys behind a paywall, but we are thinking about upping it a little bit, making it a little more enticing. And yeah, so. Very good. It's a little. All right. You know, good. So. Once again, thank you for joining the podcast today. We're broadcasting live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday uh, at noon Eastern Central or Eastern Central Eastern Standard Time. And thank you for being part of the community. Um, help spread the word. If you know anybody who we can help, please let them know that we've got this free community that they can join. All right, everybody. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you later. Lunch with them, lunch with them, lunch with them.